opening done. Just gotta we'll frame it off a little bit where we're at right now. I got the OSB cut to go on the top of this. Um, basically, there's gonna be a gap up there because that's where the exhaust fan is gonna set and it's gonna vent and go out of the house. If you've watched my past videos on YouTube of my current setup, uh, you can kind of understand how I'm kind of gonna be implementing everything into this. Um, yesterday, we got the wire shirt up when my friends came over and helped me with that. Uh, he did a good job. I was gonna put two switches here, but we did just did one for now. But this switch, which is going to be on the outside, if you turn that on, you know, like that or off, and what that does is turn this entire outlet on and off so I can have a whole bunch of different lights just to be able to plug in there. I got some bendy lights I use, and, and then I can just flip a switch and it'll turn all of them on. So that makes that pretty easy. This one right here, I got a quad. It's four plug-ins. I'm mounting down here because this shelf's gonna be built right along this wall. I'm gonna be able to fit about three laser engravers that way, and then I can put you know, my 3D printers and stuff like that under it on, on a lower shelf. Uh, but this will be my main power supply, even though I'll have a, probably some type of surge protector or something plugged into that, and I gotta clean up this. There's a bunch of ladybugs and stuff because this uh, room has never been used for anything. But anyway, i got this framing going on in there that's my supply closet and then actual main office through there should come into this way um then i also have this we've got a whole bunch of extra wire on it so i can uh this outlet right here my computer will actually be right there but anyway i just thought i'd take a video i just went ahead and put this in here for more support and uh now what i'm gonna do very carefully if i can do it with one hand i'm gonna start sliding this bad boy up there getting caught it's caught on something, and I'm not sure what. I'm gonna set down my phone real quick. So I might as well go ahead and pause. I'm actually gonna have to use a hammer or something to tap this in because it's wanting to start getting wedged a little bit between the concrete over there. So I'll see you in the next part. All right, so ended up running into some trouble earlier when I ended up pausing the video. You see here from trying to hit that in, unfortunately, you know, OSB breaks easy, so I ran into that. And then also back here, I'm not sure how easy you can see it. Um, for some reason, between the drywall and the concrete over here, it's tighter and also where the, I guess the corner of the concrete is. So this board, the OSB got really lodged and started pushing into the drywall. Um, so it's getting some of that tore up. So I've been having to scrape some of the drywall off slowly, get up there and screw it down just a little bit at a time with that screw to try to suck it down. Getting there, I had to do it with this also. I finally got this one down in there. So making progress. Uh, however, let me go ahead and turn on this light. I'll show you when I flip this light anything on the outlet I've got these two flexible lights that are just there temporarily but I really like these because you can kind of just clip them on you know wherever and you know I can even hook up two more lights if I want to put a power strip on that but I like how the switch will turn off all my lights on on and off for me but anyway you can see there a little better trying to light <laughs> what's going on pretty nasty looking but once I get that down um, one you're not really gonna be able to see it up there because it's above this little closet ceiling um, which by the way, this is 76 inches. These boards right here are to the top right here um, 76 inches and I'll be able to Fix that drywall put some mud over it and paint over it though. Really probably what I'll end up doing, but Step back see what it looks like here This is where we're at. This one's a lot more dim for some reason. Maybe it's just I guess because that one's pointing up like that And that's what it looks like. Still got to get a front board. I'm probably gonna have my little door over here on this side and then cover the rest of it up or something like that. I'm not really too sure. A lot of debating, contemplating kind of what I want to do. So my computer is gonna, the desk kind of be right here where I'm sitting. I would really like to be able to see all the engravers when I'm doing like uh, tracing around the frame before I engrave and stuff. But also I don't really want those lasers messing with me while I'm working on the computer. Even though the computer in here is going to be dedicated for the lasers and stuff, but I don't know. 
still a lot of comments to play. And then of course, right here, now you can kind of see, or somewhere along here, not really sure what, I may actually put it right over the doorway. However, I don't want it sucking smoke this way. So probably right here, I'll be cutting my hole out for that big old exhaust fan. And uh, one reason I made this 76 inches tall is one that's about, I don't know, six or so inches above my head. So plenty of headroom, but also I needed to leave plenty of room up here um, to actually be able to run. And I'm actually gonna have to go up in between the joists with the hose. But it's gonna hook on the top, go right there, and it's gonna go right outside. So a short little distance. So that should help me quite a bit also with my suction. But, and then uh, I got some really good silicone. I'm gonna go along here like, and uh, make sure that's really tight. Not that I think that smoke getting through that's gonna be a concern or anything. And then we got all this stuff for our drop ceiling like we did in the rest of the basement. Uh, we already have it. My wife really wants to go ahead and get it in here so we'll end up getting in here I guess and drop that light down and things like that but it's definitely coming along I got all this done today didn't really have a whole lot of time um, but uh, yeah and uh, I'll at least have two shelves for stuff and I might go with three I'm not sure because I know with one level shelf I'll, equal, I'll be able to put three laser engravers, three of the desktop laser engravers, and then I'll have like, you know, maybe uh, one of the CNC router machines, and then maybe my two 3D printers down there or something. I'm not really too sure yet, but uh, I'm to switch here, so I gotta get a cover for that also, um, for just a single one. I'll eventually put another switch there if I ever change my exhaust system later on, or end up adding the other inlet one right here I have. It's just an inlet exhaust. But, uh, that's it for this video. I'll come back when I uh, make a little bit more progress. See you later, bye-bye. All right, so I've been out here doing this for a couple hours again, making some more progress. Ended up putting another one of these in the middle for support on both sides and also to hook, hook my shelf on too. Got the first shelf on here, and it is uh, 22 inches to the board under the bottom of that. Um, so... I still have one more to get up under there, but what these do is basically my spacer so my board will set on top of here exactly how this one is setting on top of this kind of, it's uh, the same idea. You can also see back there it's uh, setting on that cross piece. We'll do the same right here, cross piece. The shelf's a little higher than what I thought, but I already had these cut and that's just what I'm gonna go off of. It's one shelf. And once I get all this painted, I'm gonna use the same paint as what we have on the drywall and the concrete, and I think it's gonna look really good. Kind of blend it and be one piece. But yeah, the one first shelved none. Ended up doing 22 inches from front to back. A little, little bit of gap back here in the back um, for a couple reasons. One, so uh, when there's dust and stuff, since it's doing a lot of wood uh, pieces with the uh, engravers, you can uh, you know sweep the dust off the back, get it out of there instead of it getting caught in the corners. And then I'll be over over here. I'll be able to run my wires up for you know power, running the the USBs to the <clears throat> to the uh, desktop and things like that. But the other one will be right here. I have a two by four setting up on top like that, and then OSB will be right about here. Or I might I don't know. There's a few different ways I could do it, uh, but that's where I'm at. This another cross piece for support right there. Just like making things really really strong. I'm just gonna back and. I got the top pretty well done. So I'm gonna go through and put a few more screws. You can see right there where it's dinged up for where I was trying to push it on. But I did end up getting it all the way on. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it for now. And uh, see you in the next part. So the paint is drying. That's what it looks like so far right here. I have to get the lights in here, it's a little dark, but I like when it blends in with the wall and everything. Now they're all painted up still have a little bit to do maybe some touch-ups and some spots um, but I didn't paint any of this yet because there's actually gonna be a board going down right here and there'll be a doorway on one side or the other so go ahead and moving over the 3d printers turn on the switch these flex lights I have two in here for now I can always make that plug in bigger if I want more but uh, so I'm a large 3d printer my smaller 3d printer here we'll probably go um, the uh, the CNC router machine, and then I'll have my, my lasers down here. I should be able to fit three lasers down here, but right now I have my two main ones. 
Uh, unfortunately, with this bad boy, this well, I can get this to fit right back up here, but the the spool won't. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out uh, to be able to hold that spool. So I'll probably end up since it just feeds right there. I'll probably end up doing is almost something like this to hold the. 3D spool up here so it can run. Step back here. It's gonna be sweet. All right, so it's starting to look a little bit more like what I had in mind. Um, now I'm starting to get some of these front boards on here. Um, Instead of having to spend a ton of money on plexiglass, this is going to be my window. And I know really you should have one up here and I guess I could get a piece of plexiglass to put up here. Um, I'm just not, I'm not sure yet. Um, but at least that's gonna be a door. I can make all this. I mean, it would really be probably the coolest if I had all this, but I didn't, one piece of plexiglass to measure this whole spot right here um, was like, uh, 230 some dollars this one piece I got right here that'll do this section was $30 so I mean even if I had to buy three of them that's 90 compared to 230 <clears throat> so it's kind of something I'm gonna think about basically I had to you have these this was I can't remember the measurements but basically you have my boards in and in, 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 in so I have the plexiglass when it comes up I wanted to overlap this and I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna put it on the front or the back but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do it on the front and uh, we'll see where this uh, gets us but uh, that's where it's at so far getting there all right so slowly but surely making progress besides all the fingerprints I got on the plexiglass but that'll wipe off um, but I got my it's called under cabinet LED lights. It's a strip of LED lights. Little tiny things that go up under there. I'll show you in just a second. And I'm starting to kind of adjust and fix my wiring. But basically, this one switch still controls every single light. Flip it on. Those ones have a little bit of delay for some reason. I guess it's because there's their own switch. But show you up here. See? They're mounted up in here. Same way up here. Mount it all along, have the light shining that way. Also have these. These bad boys are controlling on the same thing. And I'll have two down here too. We'll be able to have uh, three laser engravers down here, approximately. Uh, 3D printer, 3D printer. I'll probably put a CNC milling machine over here. Um, I'm still gonna have to figure, see this has this holder right here. I'm still gonna have to figure out something uh, with this 3D printer. I mean, I could mount it up here. You know, put a roll on there. I mean, I'm gonna have to figure out something. Uh, I'm not too, too sure, however, about that, because that feeds that up on this one. And this one has to come down, because it was actually, you know, from up here, but I know there's not enough roll for that. So I'm gonna have to figure out something. I don't know. And maybe it uh, it's meant to be able to do this as well. However, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a roll up on there. Um, but. However, that might work, so I'm not sure. I'll have to mess with that later, though. I'm not too concerned about it. And I might also even have to move this 3D printer over here, considering um, this one won't actually be hardwired to my computer, you know, like with the USB. Um, but it has the SD card over here on the, on the side. Which somehow looks like that's bent or something. Maybe not. But, uh... That's where we're getting <laughs> lots, of, lots of cords. I have a lot of plug in those so that way I can easily adjust stuff. It's a hard wire, but basically everything that runs from this outlet comes off that switch that turns everything on and off. And this right here is going to be this is my power surge protector. Um, it is protected, it's not just a power strip, it's actually a surge protector that'll run my machines. And I'll have one that comes down from here, and you can see I got these. Uh, these are basically like a kind of a permanent extension cord, you know, they got the ground on them and everything. And they're just six foot runs, but they run from the actual power. And this power down here is going to be on this live, you know, all the time to run the actual um, machines. It'll also run the exhaust. I'm still gonna have to put that hole up here for my exhaust. And I might put it over here instead of, um, you know, if I had it over here, how about me, let me step out. Um, my theory is that if I had it over here, 
Um, it's gonna be sucking the smoke this way and some will get out, out, you know, whatever door I end up putting here. But if I have it over here, which actually gets me closer to be able to exit the house, um, any smoke should be theoretically sucked up this way and I'm gonna have all this silicone and nice and tight. So, I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be a little bit of smoke get out, you know, time to time, but you know, a lot better than a lot of setups, so. Kind of got everything ran like that and every all the lights of course like i said have their own switch but have the main right here you can turn that off and it turns off everything so come back with uh, another update video when i get more done starting to get the other bench done with some untreated two by fours and a piece of osb i cut and you can see over here i started getting this it's really cool how paint just changes so much the way some osb not only what it looks like but also in my opinion the longevity i think osb lasts a really long time my workbench out of my garage i built here it has been there about two and a half years and i put a nice thick of coat of paint on there actually i think i put two and you can almost even hardly see once you this only has one coat but once you get two and it just keeps the dust and everything out of it and i'll do the same here with this and i went ahead and screwed this board into the end here you see i got braces under there just to help hold the legs in together i'll paint them too um but uh this one down here i put on the end so that way when i go to bring my other osb to go over here like that i'll have something to set it on and screw it to but uh so that's where that's getting i might even come here and take a two by four and run it maybe not along the back i don't know something right here but i'm not really too sure yet but Getting there again, making more progress with the shelving and the, I already showed the bench. Just got this curtain up as well. I'll be able to, to block out, the, you know, I can have it where I still gotta clean this. I haven't cleaned the fingerprints off this from when I was putting it up. Um, but make it, you know, I can see in there. Um, if we got a bunch of stuff going, everything's going good. I can just pull the curtain closed. And this, will, the door, I'm kind of using one of the magnetic things that's gonna go here. Hopefully it'll work out good, but it'll kind of block light too. Um, I rearranged them and mounted my spool down there for that 3D printer because it's not quite enough room on top. But, uh, progress, progress. So I'm standing up here on top. Earlier today, I ran my duct outside. It's, it's a six inch, pretty good size. It's also just gonna be, I don't know, probably four foot of a total. Uh, but the big um, exhaust fan I'm gonna be moving, I went through and I drew out my lines. Um, good thing this still has a remote, even though I might be able to reach the front because unfortunately it's touch panels. Um, it's a good fan, but it's touch panels, so you have to actually go through and push, um, you know, turn it on every time. I would like, to, I wish there was a way to, you know, have it wired to a switch down there. That's why I actually had that blank spot open because I originally had wanted to do it a switch, and then I realized, you know, every time this deal shuts off, it has to be manually turned back on. So, anyway. Um, but I'm having to wash and make sure because the actual exhaust fan comes all the way up and it's pretty doggone close to hitting um, these floor joists, ceiling beams, whatever you want to call them um, in here. But uh, so I'm having to make sure you see I ran it up in this wider area. So I'm having to make sure where the round part comes up where this will hook onto it's back here. So I did have to lay it back a little bit to where that can fit in there. So. I got my pilot hole drilled in. I'm going to uh, get the jigsaw blade done in there, cut out my square, and uh, make it more progress. All right, unfortunately, where the hole had to go, um, <laughs> there's a board there, and yeah, I break off these screws because I went ahead and attached this here in both these ends. But see where it cut through? It didn't cut all the way through, so it's still, I mean, gonna do its job here. But this is where the hole is. I said, unfortunately, this is here, but I wanted that support there from the get go. But it'll set right here and. You can kind of see where it'll hook on right up in there and just like that. Um, also knocked down a lot of sawdust down here. I got a lot of sweeping I gotta do. And uh, looks like my LED lights came undone and came unstick too, so I'm gonna have to get that fixed. I just mounted one of my monitors. My older monitors are small, but it'll work fine for in here on the swivel. Swivels all different types of ways. Not really any other option really too much in the corner and then i'll probably put another one right here maybe i'll even do one above it i'm not sure but <clears throat> that way 
I'm sitting down right here. <laughs> this desk, the computer. I just turn my head and look in there. So when I got all the machines busy, you know, lasers and stuff, I have this curtain. It'll slide on there, it'll slide that way or that way, whichever. And it comes all the way down to about right here. So it'll block all that light and I can continue to sit here on the computer. All right, starly, starting to get that hooked up, computer hooked up. Got uh, two of the engravers moved in here. Finally got the big fan going and I have this remote, thank goodness. That's pretty well it for all this video I've been making over the past uh, two weeks. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.